Rudy Giuliani, which, as you know, is a name that evokes so much in politics, in law, and also in charting the insurrection and the coup. There might be no person other than Donald Trump more closely associated with those efforts to overturn the election, no person more tightly aligned with the strategy, the big lie, the attempts uh, at every level, state, local, elector, and then ultimately marching and storming the Capitol. Might be no person larger than Giuliani. So the headline here is a big deal. Special counsel Jack Smith getting Giuliani. That's a sign, again, that this probe, which at times had stalled out with regard to aspects of January 6th, is intensifying under special counsel Smith's leadership. You see Giuliani there with Trump. He met with Smith's team. We can now report under an agreement that's called a proffer. And we'll get into exactly what that involves. But it basically is a type of step or victory for Jack Smith, because it means that he has gotten Giuliani to sit down and talk. It can also ultimately lead to a cooperation deal, although that's not being reported yet. But there may be a great interest inside DOJ in getting everything they can out of Giuliani or getting him to flip and provide material, factual evidence and otherwise, on who else, including Donald Trump, may have been involved in crimes related to the coup. Now, Giuliani's played many roles. He was, of course, a prosecutor himself. He was mayor. Um, but his role here is the personal lawyer in the face of the big lie. The New York Times uh, is one of the outlets that's reported this, and they describe it as a, quote, voluntary interview. This is new, breaking today. The interview itself they document as taking place sometime last week, and an indication that Smith is seeking witnesses who might cooperate in the case. Again, that word cooperate, because proffer can lead to more than just words. It can lead to a full-blown cooperation deal. Now, the New York Times reports that the feds asked about very specific things, including a plan to create, quote, fake slates of pro-Trump electors, that they also asked about something that we've documented in our special reports here, the role played by coup mastermind John Eastman and lawyer Sidney Powell. And they asked about one of the arrows I've shown you when we break down the plots, one of the aborted plans to try to get the military to commit a coup for Donald Trump. Now, that plan didn't go forward, but it was discussed at the Willard Hotel days before the Capitol, along with other things that Steve Bannon, Powell, and sort of the more extreme folks were cooking up. And by the way, Giuliani was on record, according to the Jan 6 Committee, warning against the military coup. So that's a bundle of things that The Times and others say was discussed. They've also asked about the election night and what Giuliani was telling Trump that early on. There's a lot more, of course, in a full accounting that Giuliani would have to explain, including stuff like this. Let me answer the question. Let me answer the question. I know crimes. I can smell them. You don't have to smell this one. That could have been Mickey Mouse. That could have been a dead person. Ballots that were stuck in the machine eight times, nine times, ten times. All the networks. Wow. All the networks. Did you all watch my cousin Vinny? We're joined by someone who knows his way around exactly these kind of investigations, Watergate prosecutor Nick Ackerman, who we call on big nights like this. As this news was breaking, uh, the Times says it was as recent as last week. NBC has also confirmed it. Uh, we're learning about it today. Uh, Nick, what does it mean to you that Jack Smith got Giuliani to sit down? Uh, this is absolutely huge, Ari. This means that they have evidence, that they have somehow convinced Bob Costello, who's Rudy's lawyer, to bring him in for a proffer agreement. And I think what we have to look at here, I mean, one plausible explanation is that Mark Meadows had testified in the grand jury recently. And Mark Meadows was really kind of the ringmaster for Donald Trump, dealing with all the people across the spectrum, from Rudy to uh, Roger Stone to General Flynn to Steve Bannon. And I, I have to believe that they came up with enough evidence on Rudy uh, that he is concerned enough that he went in and realized that he has to play, let's make a deal. Uh, and the way this let's works Let's reflect is right there on the point. Let's reflect on what you're breaking down, Nick, because we hear about people going in, and obviously you can go in and be less than cooperative, or you can be put before the grand jury. We've heard about that. People have heard as we've monitored right. all this. You're emphasizing the distinction that because it's a proffer, because it was a voluntary sit-down, that means you perceive Smith and his team as having pressured and moved Giuliani, moved him towards the DOJ? 
Absolutely. He didn't go in there willy-nilly just happening to volunteer because he's suddenly a good citizen. I think they really came up with more evidence, basically presented that to his lawyer, Robert Costello. Um, I know Robert Costello. We were in the U.S. Attorney's Office together. He's a good lawyer, and he would know when it would be appropriate to bring Rudy Giuliani in for a proffer agreement. Now, to break it down a little bit further, just to explain what a proffer agreement is, it's also known as a queen for a day agreement. What it means is right. that what you say will not be used against you unless you wind up lying, then all bets are off, and then you can be indicted um, or charged with perjury. Um, but it also has as part of it that any statements that you make that lead to other evidence can thereafter be used by the prosecution. So in a sense, uh, Rudy Giuliani really has to bear his soul and has to be truthful yeah. because he has some idea of what Mark Meadows has said. He has some idea of what other people have said. He was right smack dab in the middle of the big lie and the perpetration of that lie in 30, 40 different courts around the country where he basically got tossed out uh, every single yeah. time. So that's, he, let's dive into that. Let's dive into that in plain English, Nick, because that, that could scare other people that he is talking about, uh, whether it's a Eastman or a Sidney Powell. It could scare Donald Trump himself. Let's take uh, one of the, what I told viewers is one of the arrows, one of the plots they didn't finish, but that may have involved crimes, uh, which was that there were people reportedly trying to commit a military coup. You know, we just, we just followed a Russian version of that. They were trying to do that here. And no one has yet been indicted for that, Nick. But as you know, that's a serious thing. Giuliani reportedly, told his, through his people, tried to tell the January 6th committee that he warned against that. He never cooperated fully, but there was reporting that he warned against that. You're saying that Jack Smith could sit him down now and say, as long as you tell the truth, uh, you can give us more detail about how that was going to work. How far did it go? Did anyone call the Pentagon? Sidney Powell was allegedly appointed to that role. Did that intersect with any of these would-be, wannabe, self-proclaimed, militia-style, military veteran tough guys, some of whom have now been convicted on Jan 6? You're saying to us tonight that this means Giuliani can actually say that stuff with some protection for himself, and Jack Smith can then use it? Yes, he can absolutely use it. And the question will be, what the end game is for Rudy Giuliani. Is he going to have to plead guilty to some kind of lesser crime, or are they going to give him immunity? I, I kind of think they're going to insist on a lesser crime. The, the military coup hmm. that you're talking about was in December of 2020, when they were talking about actually putting the military out there and seizing the voting machines. What Giuliani may know something about is what stopped that, which was, I believe, there was talk about them getting this information through a different source. And obviously, as it turns out, we learned that one of those different sources was from Coffee County in Georgia, where they actually took yeah. out data and used that, and they took data out of another county in Michigan. And I'm only jumping in. I want you to finish your point, but the arrows I mentioned is that military plot is on our screen here. Uh, viewers can see that would be illegal no matter what. That's why it's red. We'll put this in full, Nick. When you look closely at this, what you'll also see is when that military plot uh, failed. So you see military seized voting machines. It stopped, as you mentioned accurately, in December. It was that very night when they pulled back on that, when allegedly Trump was warned, you will be in prison for this alone if you keep going. That night, he sent out the first public call for Jan 6. That's why the January 6 sabotage arrow begins when the military ends. And so do you think Smith could also, through, through this Giuliani proffer, say, what else was going on that night? Uh, you're, you're already talking about using force in a way. That would be government force. Uh, now you're talking about Jan 6. Who was going to be called up? Why was it that same night? Why did you say it'll be wild? Why was Navarro's name in the tweet? Uh, how would that all work, Nick? Oh, sure. I mean, he asked, he'd be asked about all of those. In fact, you recall when Cassidy Hutchinson testified before the January 6th committee, she and Giuliani had walked out one evening before that, where Rudy said to her, boy, it's going to be wild, uh, Cassidy. Are you excited about what's going to happen on January 6th? 
I mean, he was smack dab in the middle of everything. Um, if he comes totally clean here, Donald Trump's in big trouble. John Eastman's in big trouble. Um, right down the line, possibly General Flynn, Roger Stone, uh, Steve Bannon. I mean, particularly, I don't think they've had anybody who has been in place in that Willard Hotel war room. And what was going on yeah. there and what was the connection between people in that war room and the Proud Boys and, and the Oath Keepers? That's what